In Japan, although Tsuji's disaster survey team have returned to Tokyo after completing their first mission in Iwate Prefecture, they managed to hand out 20 tons of supplies to tsunami survivors in Ofunato and Rikuzen Takata. The weather in the area is still cold, but the supplies carried in by the volunteers and the care and compassion of donors around the world helped bring some warmth to the survivors. The tsunami on March 11 swept inland for several kilometers. Located near the epicenter, Iwate Prefecture's Rikuzen Takara City, City Hall, financial district and shopping centers were consumed in the raging torrent. Nearly three weeks after the disaster, survivors still have no access to money and are unable to buy daily necessities. Utility lines remain down as well. Not only did the tsunami destroy homes and force inhabitants into emergency shelters, but it halted all functions of the city. When the tsunami came, it leveled homes and buildings. Most of the homes that are left standing are inhabitable, and the few lucky homes that survived unscathed became shelters for survivors. This one houses 23 people. After the disaster, strangers have become families, carrying each other through this difficult time. Though the survivors may have been strangers before the tsunami, now they work together to survive. Hearing that residents were running low on supplies, city volunteers quickly arrive on the scene. <laughs> Life will only get harder from now on. If the weather was warmer, it would be better. But it's still cold now. I don't know where my four brothers are. I don't have other relatives. Around here, any place people can find shelter is filled with survivors. People gather and support each other through this difficult time. Siji as well remembers to not only give supplies to emergency shelters, but nearby homes as well. About 500 to 600 people live right around here. They come here to pick up food, then return. So in reality, over some 800 survivors have taken refuge around this area. Right now, we still have enough blankets and shawls for about 600 to 700 people. So we will unload them all here. Everyone faces the unprecedented disaster to the best of their ability, including city councilman Komatsu. He writes down his personal thanks on the back of his business cards for each volunteer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming out of your way. We have felt your sincerity and I'm deeply touched. If only just a little bit, I would like to convey my gratitude. So please allow me to do this. Thank you. Halfway through thanking the volunteers, the councilman breaks down in tears. The pent-up emotions were too much to hold back even for his male pride. Polite as always, Komatsu apologizes for his behavior, which actually helped bring everyone closer together. Though it may seem sunny and warm, the fact the bone-chilling wind can freeze your breath in tears. I'm almost numb in my limbs. For proof of how cold it is, you can see how there is a thin layer of ice here. Even in March, northeast Japan remains very cold. The blankets brought by Tsuji volunteers can help the residents stay warm at night, and the shorts can be worn to keep warm when going out. Just as important as the supplies, it is the sincere love that the volunteers deliver that has warmed the heart of these disaster survivors. <笑>我們帶了一些披肩來給大家保暖
天将他的大船拉回，船心星起，秋天下无踪。人间。An elderly woman succumbs to emotions, and a Tsuji volunteer comforts her with a Tsuji song. The love and the music crosses the language barrier and warms the hearts of residents. <laughs> United, the world stands as one with Japan to help her cope with nature's fury. This love has reached the shores of Iwate Prefecture and is making life better here one day at a time.